Chuck. Yeah. Got yet another explainer. There's no end of these. Good. <laughs> I kept thinking. We need them. You know, will people get tired of them? I just don't know. No, they're just increasing in popularity. Yeah, well, well, there's a subject in the universe that no one grows tired of. Oh. Not, okay, the search for life that's up there. But you know what I think is even higher than that? Oh. Black holes. Oh, oh God, yes. People God. love black people holes. People love them some black holes. Yeah. And, and, you know, Jan 11 has been our go-to on this, but Absolutely. she comes to it as a physicist. Yes. So she can speak of black holes sort of in the abstract and the, and the, and the general relativity of them. But and, and, the, and the blues music that they play. The black hole blues, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, nah, but nah. When, when a black hole shows up just in the house, you know, in the astrophysicist house, right. I got to bring in an astrophysicist black hole expert. Ooh. So let me introduce you to my friend and colleague, Savick Ford. Savick, welcome, welcome to Star Talk. Hey, Neil and Chuck. Very lovely to be here. Excellent. Me. Excellent. And so you, uh, you are in the City University System of New York. Which campus is that? I am at Borough of Manhattan Community College, BMCC. Oh, okay, BMCC. All That's the way right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Right. And, and, of it. and the Grad Center. So and the Graduate Center. I get that's, around. That's the CUNY Grad Center, C-U-N-Y grad, Graduate Center. Excellent. And so your, last I checked, your research interests are what black holes are doing in the galaxy. You know, as they eat stars, as stars orbit them, as they collide. So you're, you're a black hole maven in the house. So this great. day in black holes. <laughs> I am proud to claim that title. And <laughs> for the record, black holes don't suck. They're awesome. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All okay. right. I got you. Right. I right. thought you were going to go where, uh, what is it? Uh, there's no such thing as gravity. Earth sucks. You see? <laughs> you ever hear that? I don't okay. know. I ca- it's where I keep all my stuff. I can't complain too bad. So tell me, I, we, ch- we checked recent news uh, about a, a black hole that's just isolated with a whole trail of stars freshly born behind it, like just discovered like yeah. days ago. So Sava, who who made this discovery? Uh, the team was led by Peter Van Dockham at Yale. Could you yeah. just t- tell me what that news story was and what the hell is going on in our backyard? So it is very cool and it's not super in our backyard. It's actually about uh, eight, billion light years away oh wow. okay so it's it's you know it's a, like, it's a day's trip, it's, <laughs> a day's trip. Yeah, yeah 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 but might, might want to pack a suitcase you, you could be gone for a while uh but it's it's um one of these supermassive black holes so uh, i am very interested in we think that most galaxies have supermassive black holes in their centers we know that ours has a supermassive black hole it's about four million times the mass of our sun in the center of our galaxy and that's like kind of a small one dang. so yeah you're a black hole envy chuck it's been, yeah, I, been going I, on for a while I, I gotta tell you i do right now yeah know? even 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 the andromeda galaxy the nearest big galaxy test what's its mass what's the mass of its black hole it's a little closer to like 10 million times yeah, the mass see? of our sun oh, so yeah yeah oh, i know man, let me tell you that's yeah. that's embarrassing in the locker room Go. <laughs> right, right, right there the same <laughs> right across the way right yeah. okay yeah. so this one did we get a mass on this one yeah so this is actually kind of in the andromeda territory maybe a little bit bigger like two um or 20 million uh, times the mass of our sun. Okay. And so there's, and, and we think that there's actually the, the story that we've got is okay. that there might be three black holes involved in this whole situation. So, so yeah. Three, three distinct black holes that have not yet merged, but we're just observing them because we can't really observe them <laughs> because there's no light. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. And so, like, basically, right, black holes give off no light. And so, how do we observe them? And we have to rely on them influencing matter around them. And if that matter can give off light, then we can observe the influence of the black hole and, and infer that's the black hole we're doing. from what it did to the light. Exactly. And, and the other, okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And that's generally like how we how we do these things. So, 
Um, this is like another example of it, but it's a very weird example. It was totally unexpected. The people who were who found it were not looking for it. They were looking at something else in the frame and then they got this weird line, like straight line, which is not something you don't see a lot of straight lines in the universe. So they saw this really long straight line. And just to be clear. Yeah. This is evidence that we can discover things we're not looking for, okay? Because <laughs> yes. pe people wonder that, right? Is it, are you, are you, do you have receptors for things you didn't ask a question about yet? Mm. The answer is yes, right. we do. Yeah. So, sometimes science is like looking for your keys, you know? <laughs> it's like you, you lost your keys, you go looking for them, you're like, look at that, $20. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. How great is that? <laughs> yep, yep. So like that was totally what happened here. They were not looking for it. They were looking for other stuff and they're like, whoa, 20 bucks. That's pretty great, guys. Mm -hmm. We've got this line and lines are weird. So, you know, anybody who's looking at a picture of galaxies in space and they see like a straight line across it, it's like, hmm. And that's a big thing, right? You don't have necessarily eureka moments. You have Hmm, that's weird moments. And so that's what happened here. These scientists were looking for something else entirely and they saw this straight line and it was really long and really thin. So it's um, about 40 kiloparsecs in length, which is about the width of our entire Milky Way galaxy. Oh, Okay. Right. Uh -huh. And so it's really so about a hundred thousand light years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. really long and, um, and it's, pointing back at this other galaxy that's a lot smaller than ours, which, you know, is, it's been, you know, it's 8 billion years old. So we've, galaxies have grown in that time. They were smaller. It's pretty normal galaxy for the time that it was in, but it's uh, small for modern galaxies. And they were trying to figure out what could cause a straight line. We see, sometimes we see jets that shoot out of supermassive black holes that live in the centers of galaxies and they make straight lines. But this one, they looked at it in a lot of different uh, wavelengths and they were trying to figure out, well, if it was a jet, it should be spreading out as it goes away from the center of the galaxy. And they didn't see that kind of behavior. They also didn't see any evidence that it was an active galaxy, which was, swallowing matter so if black holes are going to shoot stuff out that's usually while they're swallowing material and there's no evidence of that so they're like what could this straight line thing be it actually gets narrower the further away from the galaxy you go hmm. and they realized when they were looking at it that if it was a jet it should be giving off radio waves and x-rays and it's not doing those things but it looks like there's a lot of really bright young stars wait so these and those other wavelengths you said that they looked in and the, the, they yeah. didn't notice because if you yeah. if you're just looking one wavelength, you, you, what what do you know? You don't know anything, right? Until you see exactly. What else it's doing. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You can't. It's like if you had like black and white photography, right? You can't always tell what's going on. But if you have like a color photograph, things really pop, and you can learn a lot from that. So mm -hmm. they basically went out and got a lot of X rays and, and radio wave data, and um, besides that, visible light. And they could tell that there were stars that are young, really young. And they, they realized that if a supermassive black hole had been shot out of the nucleus of the galaxy about 40 million years ago, then it could, as it's passing through the gas that surrounds that galaxy and every galaxy, it could cause little condensations of that gas that would collapse and form new stars. And oh. it would do that like in a straight line because it's being shot out in a straight line. And so as it's going along, it's going to have this, leave this trail of star formation behind it. Mm. So, so a gas cloud so. mining its own business might not make stars. So it has to be perturbed in some way, such yeah. as the black hole passing through it, punch, yeah. punching through punching. it, I guess. Yeah. It's kind of like if you've seen like those cool videos of like a bullet shooting through a gas, mm -hmm. right? And it leaves that little turbulent wake behind it where it's right. got all of those like fun. And so that that those turbulent chunks could then collapse and form new stars. Okay, so, so I'm fine with this, but somewhere in there you said 
it got shot out of a galaxy. Yeah, 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 yeah right? Like, it's got shot out of a galaxy. <laughs> can, so Can we go back to that right now, please? It's 10 million <laughs> times the mass of the sun. It got shot out of a galaxy. You don't just, you know, that doesn't just, like, happen, right? So this is why you need three black holes for this to happen. So oh. the basic idea is that when you have two galaxies that collide, they've each got a supermassive black hole in the middle, then the two black holes come together and they can form a binary supermassive black hole where they're orbiting around each other and right. they orbit really, really fast. If you were to have a third galaxy come in and drop its supermassive black hole in, then you could get some kind of interaction, like a gravitational slingshot, and the binary could kick that third object out. Mm. And this thing is actually, if, if this interpretation of this finding is correct, this thing is going at 1,600 kilometers a second. So, Savik, how fast is that? <laughs> it would get you from the Earth to the moon in just a matter of minutes. Well, so, it took the astronauts three days. So just for comparison, yeah. we're talking fast. All right. Cruising. All right. So, so this is the first of its kind that we've known. Yes. We yes. love this. This is definitely the 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 first clear cut example, and it's also very exciting because the binary black hole that should have been what was responsible for shooting out this one that's going on this straight line that they have observed, we we won't necessarily see the binary, but it is in the right mass range that in the future we could detect it with gravitational waves. And so if they collide, a, if they collide, if they collide with each other, no, not if they collide with each other. So just, a, just, just, just for existing, just as a binary, wow. because there's a space mission that's going to launch in 2034, Lisa, the laser interferometric gravitational uh, array. And it is built to detect binaries of like 10 million times the mass of the sun. Oh, oh so oh, I got it. Okay. In because, gravitational because waves. Because LIGO was detecting black holes that are tens of times the mass of the sun. Yes. So the yes. million times, that's a whole other regime, detection oh, wow. regime. Yeah, oh. you need a totally different telescope, a totally different everything. So, but, and if you were to be much more than 10 million times the mass of the sun you'd actually be too massive for lisa to see it and so you would need even a different tactic okay. so this is really exciting that like we could point to this one and be like mm, we think there might be a binary right there so not everything in the universe feeds us in the wavelengths of our telescopes of of, of our of a chosen telescope you got to yeah you got to meet the universe on its own grounds in a sense is that yep. a fair yep. way to put it yeah yeah so, well, so now go. part of me is thinking, Savic. Part of me, this is just the antagonistic part of me, is yeah. Well, they don't know what this thing is. So, let's say three black holes made it. <laughs> let's say, let's say, it sounds. It's like why not just say aliens did it? I mean, what? How? How, how frequent is a three black hole thing? Are you, is this really a thing? As yeah. frequent, as frequent as black holes come home from college. <laughs> they come that. home from college still... and the binary, which is the parents, are like, Trevor, listen, <laughs> your mother and I have decided that you need to pay rent and we're going to have, we're going to need to get $900 a month from you. And Trevor is like, for $900, I can get my own place. And the parents are like, Exactly. Get the <laughs> out. Get out, Trevor. Wait, wait, Chuck. There's a very sensitive generation listening to you now about this this very same issue. That's but true. You're, you're absolutely right. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. So, don't, so worry, seven. Kids, I, don't worry, kids. I'm not a homeowner either. <laughs> <laughs> wait. So, so, so Savic. So, at what point do you reach for extraordinary explanations? So, there is. I would say this is not that extraordinary in the sense that a lot of people have suspected that there will be these systems of three black holes and one getting ejected. And, and all fact, you required was three galaxies for that, which we know surely has happened. Yeah. Definitely. Because like we've got examples. Like I can point to you for like, there's great Hubble images of like triple galaxy collisions. Like they happen all the time. So, so Chuck, both of you in my lifetime, because Savage, I'm a little older than you. 
uh, I, I was around when that cottage industry was born within modern astrophysics, just the study of merging galaxies. And it was called Mergers and Acquisitions. <laughs> it was <laughs> oh, how very how, it was in the 80s, Wall too. Street, 80s. It, was, it was very 80s Wall Street. Mergers and Acquisitions. Galaxies are good. <laughs> <laughs> the Gordon Gecko of the universe. <laughs> the more they eat, the better. Right? Exactly. That's good. Yeah. So, so all right. So, that's, I'm glad to hear that because you know there are going to be people saying aliens did it, right? They have some black hole, uh, 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 some black hole cannon or something. Right? Yeah, yeah. There, there might be, there might be a guy we all know at some particular institution who might want to claim that, and the rest <laughs> of us will laugh and say. Ah! <laughs> That's just Sabi. So. All right, well, Sabi, thanks for this. Yeah, and 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 just I'm delighted that you, you you could bring this expertise to our explainer. Occasionally, our explainers do current events, and I like reaching out to my peeps out there. Well, again, Sabi, thank you for that bit of expertise dropped into our our weekly explainer. Thank you for having me. Lovely. And Chuck, always good to have you there, man. Always a pleasure. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. You're a personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up.